today is a very exciting day for me. We have a special guest. Everybody on our show is a special guest, but I, I'm calling um, this one real special guest. Dr. Sunil DeHand is an internal medicine physician. He grew up in England and after medical school, undertook his residency training in Baltimore, Maryland. He has since worked up and down the East Coast. His main current clinical interest is metabolic health and lifestyle medicine. He ran a popular blog and then started spreading his message on YouTube. He founded an online health academy and he helps people all over the world improve their physical and mental health. Welcome to the show, Dr. DeHand. Hello there. Hi, it's uh, great to join you. Oh my God, it's so good. You are absolutely the first doctor we've had on the show. And really? Yes. So you hold a high pristine already of being on the show. And, you know, I'm really interested in speaking to you. So what I thought we would do is I want to walk through how you got down this course of path. But I also feel very interested. I think there's a lot to be unpacked in the words metabolic health and lifestyle medicine. So combine a little of your history, which I think is going to also include those words, which I got this kind of gut feeling is going to also bring up a little bit about what you're passionate about. Take take it from there. Tell us the fill in the blanks. Absolutely. Well, thank you for that introduction and an absolute honor to uh, join and, and speak to all of you. Uh, as you've already said there, I, um, I've had a bit of an unusual path as a physician. I started off, I, I grew up, as you mentioned, in the UK. I went to medical school over there. Then I hopped across the pond, did my residency here, and I am board certified in internal medicine. So as your viewers would know, that's a very generalized field. I'm qualified to work both in a clinic and in a hospital. For the first few years of my career, I worked in a hospital practicing acute care hospital medicine. And I realized very fast once I was in clinical practice that so much of what I was seeing at the front lines was sadly as a result of poor lifestyle choices. Yeah. And I'm sad to say that since that time, our situation has declined rapidly in the United States. We have now, I don't use this term lightly, a metabolic health catastrophe. And what I really focus on is how people can stay healthy both physically and mentally, through predominantly lifestyle decisions, the right kind of education. It's not as simple as diet and exercise. There's much more to it because the public as a whole are not educated. The medical establishment, unfortunately, has done a terrible job and is doing a terrible job of really promoting wellness physically and mentally. A lot of this is unfortunately the result of uh, big business interests and pharmaceutical influence. What I really do in my practice to give your viewers an idea about what metabolic health and lifestyle medicine means, basically what it takes into account and, and acknowledges is that anybody's baseline metabolic health, which also combines with immune health, is the very fundamental of their existence. And unfortunately, we live in a time and a place where the culture is trying to take power away from people, trying yeah. to make people think that they're not in charge of their own health, that external factors influence their health. Now, of course, there's some factors that we can't control, such as our genetics, but genetics has been shown in studies to be a very small part of your overall physical and mental health at any one time. What's most important are the lifestyle decisions you make every single day. And of course, many of these are hard work. They're harder work than taking pills, but the benefits to, to, that will be reaped are absolutely enormous. And that's really what my current outpatient practice is all about, what my academy is all about, trying to empower people so that they and their families can make these better healthcare decisions and hopefully stay away from the medical establishment, the medical industrial complex, save a ton of money, feel better, both physically and mentally, because we're really missing the mark here in so many different ways. And that's what I'm really passionate about. And my journey has progressed both as a physician understanding this, and it's also very much taken me the entrepreneurial route, which is where I am right now in terms of my everyday practice. 
You know, so much what you said resonates with me. And I always, I, I love to be all my personal life, but everybody knows that watches this show, especially for the last year. I keep giving these little drops of information where now people kind of know more about me. So what they know is that I was born in a really small country town, right? We It was so small, we call it podunk. Where am I going with this? I When you grow up in the country, you eat all the fresh vegetables from your garden. I thought, believe it or not, that everybody got their vegetables from their garden when I was growing up. Up. Everything was about healing internally. And I can remember one time being in the store and I wanted the sugar cereal so bad. I was like, mom, I want the, you know, whatever they were. Right. And my mother said to me, no, that's poison. And you know what? It stuck with me that it was poison. And I don't eat anything that comes in a package. I'm to most people fanatical. But to me, it's just how I live, because then when I grew up and became you know, older and went to a Burger King, all of a sudden I felt like my stomach was sick because it just didn't have that tolerance. And then I've been an athlete. So what I came to learn really quickly is that how we what we put in our body, what we think is going to affect our energy level, which affects our success in life. And because I've always been this person who wanted to succeed in business and needed a lot of energy, I made that connection. And so what I love about what we're speaking about is we're looking at the whole whole person. I think we've compartmentalized ourselves too much. This is what we, this is who goes to work. This is who eats this. This is who lives this. This is who thinks this. I think we need to integrate our whole person. And there's a word you men mentioned that I love and that's empower. I think we have to, and I talk about it on the show. I, our audience hears me say, take back control, take back control of our life. And so with that, I want to kind of just launch into how you view the whole person because I got a funny feeling that you have that same holistic way of looking at things and tie it into your specialty whatever direction to go from there please do of course well I have to say your, your mother was a very wise person to tell you that how many people know that now um, unfortunately statistics show that 70 percent of all calorie intake in the United States is ultra processed foods and it is the default choice. What do I mean by ultra processed foods? Well, basically, as you touched upon there, anything which comes from a packet uh, is in a package when you buy it in a tin, has a long list of ingredients, many of which you don't recognize. And all of that food is basically unnatural. It is far away from its natural source. So whether you believe in nature, God, whatever your personal belief is, it's important to try to eat as natural as possible, as close to the source as possible. Don't let it go through a factory and get contaminated with all the man-made chemicals. And unfortunately, right now, what we're seeing, and this is a problem that has been exacerbated over the last few years, and it's getting worse with every single year, is that because people are consuming this food, which is totally unnatural, when we put a packet of sugary cereal into us, our gut has no idea what's gone into it. I mean, we are still the same from an evolutionary perspective as cavemen. And up until 30, 40, 50 years ago, my, my favorite saying is, if you eat what your grandparents and great grandparents used to eat, you can't go wrong, because yeah. they used to eat very natural foods. Their calorie model is completely broken. It's not about calories. It's what's done to the food. And every time you eat something unnatural, your, you will send your enteroendocrine internal hormonal system into overdrive. Your liver will get overloaded. It will lead to problems, including obesity, which we have a true pandemic off right now, type two diabetes, heart disease, other inflammation. There's a very strong link with mental performance, which we'll come to in a moment, because this is very important for every entrepreneur. But what I would encourage before I get onto my pillars of metabolic health and the holistic question, I would urge everyone out there to please get into the habit of reading food labels and understanding that ultra processed foods are the cause of much misery in society. I think once we get more of a collective awareness, this will be a bigger disaster than tobacco in the 1950s and 60s. We're just not at that collective level of awakening yet, but eating real food brings a whole host of benefits, whether it's vegetables, fruits, meat, dairy, whatever it is, if you get it from its natural source, 
cook it and you, you can season it, you can add spices, you can make it absolutely delicious, you will be attracted to the ultra processed foods for a reason. Think of that CEO, that big food executive who is making billions, trillions of dollars. They want you to be addicted to their food. So they make it what we call hyper palatable. So yes, sugary cereal, that bag of chips is, is addictive and nice. Of course it is. It's made that way. Yeah. And unfortunately, millions of people don't understand that this is all deliberate, but it will set you down a path of metabolic dis to metabolic dysfunction. Drugs may be very, um, may give you a sense of euphoria or happiness. Of course, that's what they do to the receptors. But we're seeing on a mass scale, this experiment with artificial foods. So that is my biggest first mantra to focus on. And people can come to my website, they can come to my academy, listen to my lectures and learn more about this because it does intrinsically link to mental performance. But number one, focus on a real food diet, low in ultra processed foods and sugars. Number two, pillar of wellness is your activity levels. Make sure that you are as active as possible. You touched upon the fact that you are an at, you were an athlete or are an athlete. You might be you look, yeah. you're in yeah. great shape. I'm sure you still work out. Yeah. Um, and that's not just to burn calories. If you exercise regularly, it brings a whole host of other benefits. It's an energy boost. It helps with concentration. It's a mood boost. It helps you sleep better at night. And once you get into the habit of this, now everybody who's an entrepreneur is usually disciplined. Mm -hmm. My rule is one hour a day of exercise. One hour a day. It is 4% of your day. That is it. Make it enjoyable. No distractions, no text messages. Listen to your favorite music. Listen to a podcast. And whatever you enjoy, whether it's cardio, I'd always recommend throwing in some muscle strengthening three days a week. Again, all of this is I, I've written widely about and talked about. Commit to one hour a day of exercise. Make it as much a part of your life as eating and drinking. And so many people say to me, oh, I can't imagine doing an hour a day. I'm so busy. I'm, I'm juggling a, a job. I'm, I'm juggling my business. I'm juggling family. 4% of a day will bring you enormous benefits for that other 23 hours that you couldn't imagine. If you talk to people who exercise religiously every day for an hour, they're very different people from those who don't exercise regularly. So that's number two pillar of wellness. You number know, three. Two things I'm going to go back before we go through, if I can, can I, can okay. we hold on three? I want to go back sure. and I want to mention sure. something about the label reading, right? The label. Yeah. I want to go back to the label just for a second. I want two things. One is just a comment. And then the other one is, I think something I would like to acknowledge. And the comment is I, I'm a, of course, I don't read any, eat anything packaged. I won't even eat. I'm crazy. I won't even eat frozen food because it looks dead to me. It looks dead. You know, it just does. It looks dead. Right. So but I thought about how we just gloss over, and I'm getting the words wrong, but you know, the red dye and this and this, and we gloss over all those words that are on the labels and like accept it and don't even think about it anymore. We've been desensitized. And yeah. see, when I look at a label, I'm like, I don't want red dye in my body. But for the last 30 years, we've seen it so much, we've been desensitized. And I think that's an interesting thing that we just gloss over. And the other thing is just a quick acknowledgement on number one and number two. And I speak on this on finance, and I'm going to tie the two together. I am always working with people on their finances. And then I, you know, they want to believe that they can sync their accounts with QuickBooks, push a button and all the finance is done magically. Right. And it's not true. And I tell people, if you're going to be in a business, you have to acknowledge it's going to take a certain amount of time to have your finances correctly. But if they're not done correctly, you have nothing. So too often people want to believe that if it takes time, it's I don't have the time and it's not something I need to do. And I think it ties into your one and two. When it comes to cooking fresh vegetables, I would be the first to say it takes more time than opening up a packet and throwing it in the microwave, right? But I think we also have to come back to caring enough about ourselves 
and our experiences within our own body that we are accepting that it takes time. So I just wanted to make those two statements to anybody in the audience that is thinking, well, you know, a package is quick and easy. These are true statements, but it comes back to what matters to you. And I am talking with entrepreneurs every day that the most thing, they go to bed at night worrying about their company, they get up in the morning worrying about their company. And this is one of the key messages I wanted to have explored. Yes, but take a little bit of an understanding of what you do need to block out time to invest. So please continue with three, but I think there's also this acknowledgement of, yes, it takes more time. Let's accept it. Let's put it on the table. It's the pink elephant in the room. But if you take this much more time doing these things, like the walk you talked about, you are suddenly so productive. You're so freaking productive. When I take a break and I go for a walk, I, in fact, I used to do this as a CFO turnaround. I would get where I couldn't figure out the answer and I would tell the client, I got to go for a walk and I'd come back and suddenly everything was clear as day. So I just wanted, you made such great points. I wanted to break them down into more oh. ramble yeah. to really drill them into people. So thank you for letting me interrupt you and any comments on what I said, oh. if not just jump into number three. Absolutely. No, I, I know I'm going fast here. So yeah, feel free to jump in at any point. And uh, I'd like to, to make a, a quick point there, which may sound very blunt. If you think that eating healthy, whether it's vegetables, chewing organic, whatever is taking time or costing money, try getting sick and see how much time or money that costs you. Yeah, It's a worthwhile investment. And sometimes you're all very smart people here. You like the truth. You probably want to be hit with the truth. That is the blunt truth. Yeah. So I'll move on to my other three pillars because there's five pillars total. I think you'll like this one, by the way, in your, your field. So the, the third pillar is to focus on stress management. Mm -hmm. Stress wreaks havoc on the body. I can't tell you how many people I see, patients come into the hospital, I'll be diving into the history, they'll come up with an un come in with an unusual illness and I'll say, how have you been? And they'll say, Doc, listen, last three weeks, I've been really stressed, I haven't been myself at all. And boom, they get sick. We see yeah. it all the time. It's a potent suppressor of your metabolic and immune health. So it's very difficult to give generalized advice because stress is a very complicated topic that we alone, we could talk another time and dedicate a whole show just to stress management because it's something I'm very interested in. Your cortisol and adrenaline are the two main stress hormones. Having chronically elevated stress hormones is devastating. So whatever you can do, to firstly acknowledge the stress, then however you want to deal with it, whether you want to engage in a hobby, whether you want to meditate, whether you want to be determined to respond differently, so many different topics here to explore, but I would urge you to recognize if stress is a big problem in your life and how much damage it could be doing. The fourth pillar is, that is when our bodies regenerate. Most Americans don't get enough sleep. Yeah. Sweet spot for most people, six to eight hours, restful night, practice very good sleep hygiene. Don't look at a screen for an hour before you go to sleep, have an unwinding routine in the evening, but sleep works wonders. We've all been in a situation where we've had an amazing night's sleep and we're like a million dollars afterwards. So please focus on your sleep. You know, I'm going to ask you a question on that because what I do is, you know, I, I recognize sleep. I can have I can look at the world and I think the world's falling apart. I'm no good. Nothing's going to, you know, and then I always realize I say to myself, Lori, what's going on? And I'm like, I'm tired. And so I have this because I, I have a lot of energy and I have since I'm a kid. So sometimes what I have to do quite a bit, I, I say to myself, Lori, you got to go in the crib now. That's why I get, get in the crib. And I will literally make myself go in the crib and take a nap during the day. And you know what? It's amazing. 30 minutes and I wake up and I have a completely different worldview. I'm amazed at how much my mental and stress is combined to my sleep. And it's not that I didn't sleep the night before. It's just I'm my mind's going so much. I need it to shut down and take some sleep. How do you feel about naps in the sleep? Is that a good way? Is that a bad way? I've heard a lot of arguments on naps. I know for me, it's awesome. But can you comment on naps? Yeah, again, there's never one rule for everyone. I, I would never walk up to someone who, for whom naps work and say you shouldn't nap. I mean, if it works for you, it works for you. My preference is to sleep all in one go. 
in the evening and not nap during the day if possible. Me personally, if I nap during the day, then I can't sleep properly at night. So I would rather just have that time, restful sleep, stay awake during the day. But hey, if a siesta works or you're in a position in life where you can nap in the evening yeah. and or not evening, afternoon, um, you can go ahead and do that. Well, good. I just think sleep is so important. And I, you know, we got a, a audience of overproducers that like to yeah. work it to the evening. So they may, you know, need to take a nap if they're not sleeping at night. And we also have a lot of people that like Lauren, they run a company and they have kids. And that's a whole nother level. Very of tough. Sleep. Yeah. With children. Yeah, sleep is awesome. So keep going on our pillars. These are. Okay. So, so the fifth and last pillar is the intrinsic need, because this is often forgotten about and it's not talked about much by doctors, but I'm happy to talk about it because I recognize its importance. Life goal, mission in life. You have to have that. Many people need that in order to live a happy, fulfilled and healthy life and feel like they're progressing. I'm preaching to the crowd here. You're all entrepreneurs. Um, having those sort of goals out there that you want to attain, feeling that sense of achievement, whatever your goal is, very, very important. And of course, family life can come into that. Many, many people have goals with their, their family life, but I, I would always add that as a, a pillar of wellness is making sure you're on the right track with whatever your personal goals are. You know, one thing we've talked about on the show with a couple of our guests, and I fully agree, goals are so important, but we also talk and give me any comments on this on not making your being your goal, because we unfortunately have a lot of people that have had to shut down their company. And I've stressed to them that it's not your company that made you money, you made your money. So you just don't get so in love with this one specific goal or yep. thing. Um, get in love with the passion of creation, and that gives you the ability to expand beyond what may not be working. Can you comment a bit on that? I, I absolutely love that. As somebody who's tried many different things in my life, I'm a great believer in when one door closes, another one opens. And I will leave a, a, a quote here from Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi. He said, full effort is full victory. Ah, I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. You, you know what that, I'd like to do? That's what, it, what it's about. Yeah. Have you put effort in? If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. In fact, Winston Churchill said something similar, that success is the ability to go from one failure to another with no loss of enthusiasm. Yeah. Which and I that, thought was brilliant. And that's the challenge. You know, I, I'm 59, right? I always am honest about my age on this show. I'm 59. And I started my first company at 25. And so obviously, I've been at it for some time. And my entire existence, for the most part, I've been a banker, I was with some companies, but was in small companies. And so I have seen a lot of success and failures over the time. And when I I've had to actually drag clients into bankruptcy court, because I say in continuation, is just killing you. And I always follow back with them. And every single time, whatever came upon the next venture brought them more happiness. And you hear, oh my God, I learned so of much. Course. And I was able to do this, you know? So before we go too far, I want to make sure I allot plenty of time to your online academy. I really want to stop kind of midstream to make sure we talk about this because many people have probably heard what you said so far and said, oh, I get it. I understand. But I'm a little bit confused about what choices to make, because even though I am a studier, I, I thought to myself the other day, I'm going through a situation with my cat having allergies and I woke up this morning and I literally thought this. How come it's so damn confusing to figure out what to do one of the most basic things, eat? Don't you think that just eating should be one of those things on my list that I shouldn't have to spend all this confusion? I'm like, I'm confused about where the future's going. I'm confused about this. I'm, and now I'm confused on eating? God, is there anything not confusing? So please talk about the confusion of eating and how we can use your resources, your academy, and all the wonderful things you're doing direct to the public to educate ourselves and help us to make better choices. Sure. Thank you for, for asking that question. Well, I, I have done a lot of work generally online. I have a lot of YouTube videos, as you know, which uh, focus on many of these health topics. 
I'm also active on other social media sites. I know you've got some of the, the links in there in, in the description. So I started my academy to, to really get a group of people together who are all seeking the, the same thing, which is to optimize one's physical and mental health in every way possible naturally, to stay away from the medical industrial complex, as I call it, as much as possible, to acknowledge that a pill is not the answer to life's ills. There are far better ways to achieve success and to improve your, your current situation than, than turn to medicines. Now, obviously, I'm a doctor. There are many situations for which medicines are needed, and I'm certainly glad it's 2023 and not 1723 if I had a medical emergency myself. But I do believe that the United States medical system is absolutely gushing with conflicts of interest, influence from big corporations, pharmaceutical companies. And I personally, be very honest here, I have before said it uh, many times, I don't trust the system myself. Yeah. I would go to a US hospital to get emergency care because obviously where else am I going to go? But I personally have dedicated my own life to trying my best naturally to stay away from needing medicines, being as healthy physically and mentally as possible. So what I did was I designed an academy and it's basically a, a course, it's, it's a bargain, it's, it's $97 for the whole year. And basically what you get is uh, a number of different lectures, you can do them in any order, there's quizzes to basically empower you with things that your doctor never tells you. And to understand that small everyday steps, whether it's um, eating a certain way, whether it's doing a certain exercise, whether it's simple mind tricks, supplements, little things can make enormous differences to your life. But I want to teach people the science of it. And I also do regular webinars where I interact with Academy members. So that's what the Academy is all about. And unfortunately, in our, our current environment, as you might imagine, what I'm doing is rubbing some people the wrong way. People who are very interested in the US medical system, staying the way it is, not focusing on wellness, preventive medicine, wanting people to think that the answer lies in drugs. Obviously, what I'm teaching, much of it may even be censored on other platforms, even though it's real science and it's teaching people yeah. the history of how we got to where we are. So I really wanted to do that for people. So if people want to join my academy, that would be fantastic. I also have a lot of other information on YouTube and other platforms. So that's that's the goal of my academy to keep people as healthy physically and mentally as possible, stay away from the medical industrial complex and to live their best life basically in every way possible. Yeah, uh, you know what? I could not agree with you more. And I know that you have been, unfortunately, we're in a state of the world where just hearing about how to stay healthy and out of a medical doctor's office can be censored at times. So I think it's awesome what you're doing with your academy. And I personally agree. You know, I heard somebody say one time, and I don't recall who it was, but it was a doctor. And he said, you should look at the medical establishment as cut and drugs if you need to be cut open or give drugs. And I that stayed with me. It might have even been Deepak Chopra. I don't want to make a statement that's yeah. not true, but because I listen to a lot of Ayurveda medicine and holistic medicine. And when they said that, I thought to myself, that is fascinating. And so I took out an accident rider and decided not, not to have medical insurance that's going to cover anything but holistic because I don't want to, drugs and I may need to get cut because I'm uh, I was a rock climber for years, right? So I was like, I can I can injure myself. But and that's where I went, you know, uh, one of the things and I don't recall exactly what it was, but I was watching a show, uh, one of your um, locals, which you're on quite a bit. And the conversation, which I think is an interesting one, just to pick a little piece about. And I actually asked you a question about this because it's been very confusing to me. And that is the addition of sweeteners. Um, you know what? We we kind of now know Splenda's no good. Stevia is allegedly good. It's like it keeps changing. Yep. And then sugar. And I think even if we can just talk about sweeteners, and I'm gonna, you're gonna see me bend down a second. My I just knocked out the plug to plug in my battery. So guys, uh, if you see my my neck, that's why I'm gonna go plug in the plug for my battery on my computer. But can we chat about sweeteners? Because I know if anybody yeah. else in the audience is probably like sweeteners confuse the death out of all of us. So yeah. I'm going to let you talk about it. I got to reach down and plug in my computer. <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely. I'm happy. It's a great topic. And I can talk from uh, personal 
experience as well. In fact, a lot of what I'm teaching is from personal experience because believe it or not, I didn't always used to be this way. I was very much on a different path before I became more awakened to Um, what's happening. So that's another reason why I want to empower other people. But I grew up eating a fair amount of sweets. I mean, my parents a lot of the time would give us good food. I'm of Indian heritage. A lot of Indian food is very fresh. I would have that a lot of the time. But Indians do eat a lot of sweets. So I grew up drinking tea and it was not uncommon for me in my my tea to have three spoons of sugar Mm. up until I was in my 20s, seriously. And then I started to read more about sugar, understand that we're consuming unnatural amounts and our livers are getting overloaded. I may have been starting to, to put on a bit of weight. And that's when I reversed on the sugar and I switched to sweeteners instead. And then... I started to read more, and I've I've covered this in detail in some of my lectures, about the fact that sweeteners are more likely to result in people gaining weight than sugar. And it's a very interesting theory, but basically people who consume sweeteners might might think that they can be lax in other areas. Then there's some internal hormonal mechanisms that are involved. So basically, if you eat a sweetener, you your gut thinks that something sweet is going to come and prepares for it anyway, and your your hormones all change. And at, at the end of the day, what I've done, so I went from three sugars in my tea to two to one. Then I put, started putting sweetener in, um, stevia, uh, truvia, whatever. And then I weaned myself off. And I, I'm a big tea drinker. I love tea. I have like three cups a day, um, a lot of days. And uh, I completely eliminated the sweetener. And now I just drink my uh, tea with a little bit of milk, which is the English way, but no sugar. I have zero sugar and I don't miss it. And I've come to the conclusion that you can put lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig. (laughs) Everything in a packet is unnatural. Your body is the most amazing thing ever. It is millions of years in the making. You can't fool it. You can't trick it it knows when something unnatural goes into it. So if you really have a sweet tooth and can't resist, well, I guess sweetener may be marginally better than sugar. I maybe sometimes with dessert, we'll have something like organic raw honey, put that on some yogurt with some nuts. But my mantra now is similar to yours. And I would encourage for everyone else, because once you make the mental switch in your mind, you will never go back. And literally within weeks, you can reverse chronic inflammation. We can certainly touch upon the link with mental performance, which is extremely important for entrepreneurs. We'll talk about that in a moment. But I would urge people that if it comes in a packet, if it's made in a factory by some greedy corporation that only wants to make money, it's not going to be good for you. There's no way around it. And it's really interesting, too, because like you said, you just slowly wean yourself away. I used to go and, you know, have a little bit in my uh, stevia, organic stevia in my coffee. And I decided, you know what, I don't even want to do it. I don't need it. So I started just not putting it in and realized I did not miss it. And, you know, one of the things that I have been thinking recently, and you just said it with the big corporations, and it's a dual thought. I am finding much more comfort is if I am purchasing a product, like even mouthwash. I started making my own mouthwash because I was concerned about fluoride, right? But then I started finding, okay, there are some over-the-counter brands that I can buy that are very particular. And I've noticed, interestingly, these brands that I'm buying are very small startup companies, happened within the last two years, are in your local holistic store. So I know now i thought to myself and i and i talked about this on the show in general we're kind of getting where we're more comfortable in the very small company purchasing and doing business yeah. with them than the large corporation, which feeds into a show I did not long ago saying it is the best time to be an entrepreneur. So I Absolutely. think where people are still price shopping. Of course, many have, but I think they're starting to go, who's the small company out there? Am I a little bit correct in my fish, my little belief that I feel like I trust trust these small organic companies that are local more than I trust the corporations. Can you comment on that? Yes, I think the savior of America could well be small businesses in both health and everything else. And I really mean that I, I, I am 
Cool. I'm very optimistic, whether it's a doctor like me who's taken it upon himself to start a small practice, do my own thing, my own private coaching academy, or whether we're talking about a shop that says, no, let's make health products. I, I do the same thing now. I try to buy from smaller organizations. Big corporations ha are, are completely out of control. They basically own the U.S. government. But at the end of the day, the people have the power in this country. If more people yeah. get awake, hopefully we can reverse the trends. Ultimately, this is about people being healthier. We have a diabetes catastrophe, a pre-diabetes catastrophe. If people really want to focus on this health issue, I think the answer is going to be smaller place. I mean, to, to be quite frank, I mean, the, the even if you go to Whole Foods or Trader Joe's, I'm often shocked by what's on the ingredient labels. Yeah. And they're the healthiest shops in America. If but they no. can't even get it right, then what chance does anyone else have? Corporations will always go down this road in a capitalist system. I'm not arguing for communism. <laughs> but when you have unchecked capitalism with leaders in charge who don't care about health and wellness, you get the disaster we're seeing in the US. And I'll, I'll give you another example, just on the competitive um, angle of things, because you all like think in business terms. We know what's happening in the world with other countries, say China, that are rapidly catching up with the US, probably going to overtake the US soon. I can guarantee you that if China even had 10% of the health issues of the United States, they would put the brakes on immediately and they'd be very blunt. We got to reverse this. You cannot get diabetes. We cannot have this percentage of the population obese. They would do that. Now I'm not arguing for authoritarianism, but certain countries that get this right, both in terms of having cap a capitalist structure, encouraging businesses, but also taking care of the health of their population, they will end up winning in the end. So if we want America to win, we need to focus on this issue. That's a fascinating story. And you know what? Uh, um, just tying something together in a strange way. We are always talking about the environment and saving the earth, which I'm not against, obviously, from the way I, I am. But what about our own internal environment first? What if we all exactly. work on our internal environment? What would we be able to do to solve all the problems, including? And it just struck me as we were talking about. And, and you, I see what you're saying with China. They wouldn't allow the kind of things to be consumed, and the companies and the corporations and the slide the red dye under the carpet, so to speak. No. Um, and so, if we really focused on our internal environment and everything within our internal environment, I tend to be a believer that that would give us the ability. And I think if we stopped buying some of the products that are being made and started buying other ones from local and smaller companies, it also would send a message because if there's nobody purchasing, there's no consumer, there is no products. Exactly. I agree. Uh, the metabolic health catastrophe is far bigger than any quote unquote climate crisis or whatever other crisis um, the media tells you about. We, we have a situation now where some states are approaching a 70% obesity rate. We're seeing fatty liver disease, type 2 diabetes explode in adolescence. This is not sustainable. And I feel like if I can draw a historical comparison, people like me and you who are seeing this are probably like the people in the 1950s and 60s who are whispering about how bad it is that every other person smokes. Yeah. And everybody else is taking time to catch up. But the reality of life is when the herd moves, the herd moves. And I'm cautiously optimistic that we're going to reach a breaking point, either because it's going to bankrupt us or because the visible damage just becomes too great to ignore. All you need to do is to go out to your typical shopping mall or water park and, and see what's happening. And the things that people are consuming with no direction from the medical establishment to really change the situation right now. It's it's quite shocking, but it's unsustainable. And the worst thing which I touched upon there for a moment is what's happening with children. We're seeing illnesses that we never used to see before because children are consuming these vast amounts of ultra processed foods and, and sugars. It's, it's a very sad situation. Yeah. While we're on sugars, we have somebody from the audience asking about maple syrup. And, you know, that's one I heard conflicting views on as well. Could you clear up on maple syrup use? Maple syrup, depending on where you, you get it from, read the ingredient labels. Is it full of preservatives? Has it got oil in it or anything else unusual? If it's like pure maple syrup, 
like pure organic honey. I mean, the reality is in you, it will still be converted into sugar, but your body can handle that much more easily than a candy. And I might sound very strict when I'm talking, but I'm not arguing that you can never have a treat, enjoy a birthday cake or an ice cream, whatever it is. As long as you acknowledge there are certain foods out there which are higher in sugars, whether they're natural or not, I would still advise that you make it occasional rather than a habit. Don't do it every day. Perfect. Now, one of the places that I wanted to go is we're um, finishing up here and you take the direction. I'm just going to start the conversation. And you mentioned it a bit ago was the mental. And, you know, that's one thing entrepreneurs want is they want to be smarter. They want to think faster, get ahead. Everything's about think, 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 think. Can you tie us together or help us understand how what I eat and what I do is directly linked? How does that go from here to here? How does it go from here to here? Can you give us some guidelines and thoughts? Of course. Every cell in your body and every thought that you have is powered by what you eat. Where else is the power going to come from? Everything you eat determines your performance in a variety of different realms. Junk in, junk out. And I love that word, junk in, junk out. Get junk that in, in, junk out. <laughs> and there are many people, there's probably many entrepreneurs that are eating complete junk. And I would urge them to make a change in their diet. And I think they'll notice a big difference. If you eat real foods, you commit to that. Just do it for two weeks. Yeah. Do it for two weeks and just see what difference it can make. If it doesn't make any difference, fine go back to eating candy and chips. I wouldn't advise it, but do not underestimate how many people out there, especially people who are all on the go, very busy, are chronically inflamed. So yeah. If you want peak performance, you should commit to what I call an anti-inflammatory lifestyle. So focus on the right foods, the real foods, do everything else I mentioned in those pillars of wellness. And we have studies out there that, that show the enormous difference these changes can make in terms of mental performance, huge yeah. changes. Other things you can do as well, antioxidants, eat a bowl of blueberries every day. Antioxidants are marvelous for brain, mental performance. We all know what happens if we eat like a heavy carb, really bad lunch, we feel tired and sluggish. We all know that we have it happen to us. What we put into ourselves quickly affects our brains afterwards. So yep. if you're doing the right things, it won't make an average person into an Einstein, but if you want to be at your very best, make it a priority. You will absolutely not regret it. Yeah, you know, I always used to say that I'm a Ferrari and you wouldn't put sugar in the gas tank of a Ferrari and expect it to perform. I always said that, you know, I have a, a long history of strange athletics, I guess you could say, um, starting in in my early 20s, a bodybuilder to a power lifter to a mountain climber, a rock climber, an ice climber. Um, and now I'm I always kid around. I go, I went from being this really badass rock climber to pushing my cat in a stroller. But I guess that happens to the best of us. <laughs> I still am very active and, and very physically fit, et cetera. But all of those it, were so kind of on the edge that if I dropped weights on me or I fell off the side of a cliff, so performance was everything. It was my life. And that's where after my mother giving me the lessons and the childhood, I stayed with the course. And then I just, the minute I would detour a bit, I would just feel like my body went and it would just slow down. And, and I really recognized um, this. So I, I just have such a great respect for this type of conversation. And also for those that feel like a little bit of overwhelmed, you let's talk about a process where you can just kind of take a little thing and change. And then a little thing, you mentioned it about the sugar. Um, I know we went all so big. Can we kind of take it and bring it down and give some people a realistic step or at least a feeling like they can take a little bit at a time and they don't feel so overwhelmed by making these changes? Sure, sure. Absolutely. Go, go in, go in stages. Um, look at if you're talking about diet, just go in different stages of the day. Commit to doing things right for one meal a day. Cut back on this snack that you're having every day. Go to every other day instead. Of course, I'm a big believer in small steps achieve great things. The waterfall starts off as one drop of water. But over time, these things all add up. Do 10 minutes of exercise a day. Still better than nothing if you can't do an hour. Uh, sleep 
20 yeah. minutes more. Yeah. Put your phone down 10 minutes earlier. Go in small steps. Absolutely. You can't, it's very difficult for people to make a radical change in their lives, but that's why it's important to keep hearing the message, understanding what the goals are and, and, and committing to making those steps every single day because, hey, we're only on the planet for a short amount of time and changing mindset. It's probably easier for me to talk to this particular crowd than others because you're all yeah. very motivated people, want to be high achieving, yeah. but understand that the entire system around you and the way you've grown up has got you to where you are now and it's set you up for failure in so many ways you're surrounded by the wrong food you turn on the tv every other ad is trying to get you to eat something bad this is how the system this is how the establishment as i call them how they work how they end up profiting off many people and in this community here we're all about profits profits are good but only when you do it in an honest way but we have some very dishonest people in charge of us who do not give a damn about you and your family's health and you have been set up to fail realize please where you've been tricked where you haven't been told the truth where the right information is not promoted and commit to seeking the truth and making good changes and ultimately you'll know it yourself when you start to feel better What's interesting is, as I expressed to you um, when I asked you to come on the show and stuff, and I was talking with Laura, and I said, you know, I'm going a little on an edge with this topic, but I feel as though our audience can benefit from it. And I also think that our audience is someone that wants to take their whole life back into control. That's why they're starting the company, right? So I said, you know what? I'm going to go for it. I am looking at the chat, and oh my God, Lauren, do you think we have ever had such great response from what people are saying? about a guest. I mean, I just have to bring you a minute early because I am getting thanks and thanks and thanks. And we do, believe me, we get that all the time. But Lauren, I don't think I've ever seen so many people commenting on how happy they are to hear this information. So what I want to do is I want to throw it back to you with the couple minutes we have left. Um, I want to, you know, thank you so much for being here. But Dr. Dehan, just give us any last thoughts. Make sure, Lauren, you put his academy in and everything so our guests can follow up. $99 a year to get, you know, guys, you can pay $99 a year and then make, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars with this, is how I feel. But let me throw it back to you, doctor. Any last thoughts or comments you'd like to leave with our audience? Yeah, please remember everything that uh, we've talked about here. Understand that it's a journey, not a destination. Everybody can do better all the time. I can do better. As entrepreneurs, you're people that want, as you just heard, to take back control over your life. And, and that's what this is all about. Because if you don't have control over your life, somebody else is controlling you. And I've been on the journey myself. I mean, being a doctor now is not the same as being a doctor 30 years ago. I had been on that journey myself, both in terms of not doing the right things for my health, but also being on that conveyor belt to being a controlled doctor, following protocols, being under the thumbs of administrations and CEOs who've never seen a patient. And I chose to step away from that and do something different. And I've never been happier. And I want to empower people with the same message myself to, to keep going, keep going, but make your health the priority. There is no way around that. I often tell my patients, I say, well, health is your number one priority. It's, it is, to be quite frank, priority before family, because if you don't have health, you cannot be of use to your spouse or your children. Health is the number one priority. Do not neglect it. Make it a priority and everything else will kind of flow from there. That was so beautifully said. And, and I love it, especially, you know, if you look at your situation, you could have easily and most just followed the pathway, but you said, nope, I am going to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to go direct to the people. I'm going to bring this message. Guys, entrepreneurs on the call, you, you heard it from a doctor who has chose the entrepreneurial pathway to have control over his life and follow his passion. What better example could I have brought to you? Dr. DeHan, 
I just was many thanks. I told Lauren, I go, um, I'm a little nervous this morning because I told Lauren about a couple of weeks ago, I go, Lauren, I reached out to somebody very famous and I asked him to be on the show. He emailed me back and he agreed. Um, this is the first time I've actually done that, you know? So I was like, oh my God, I'm a little nervous today. And Lauren's like, you know, do your usual, Lori, it'll be fine. And it turned out spectacular. So I want to thank you so much. I want to bring you back on, Lauren, as you always do and give us our close request closing remarks what do you thank what, you I had a great time this was a great discussion <laughs> i think it was amazing um i i was a new parent and my mom said as long as you're okay the kids are okay and so that just resonated when you were you know talking today like uh who is that Denise, excuse me if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, but um, they mentioned my health is my number one priority. No excuses, no matter what, whatever it takes. And I think that summarizes it all. It was amazing. Thank you. I want to thank you so much again for agreeing to be on the show, sharing this with our audience. I really think it was a game changer. Everybody in the audience, please do check out his um, locals, his YouTube. He really brings some interesting information, gets behind the scene on a lot of different topics. I want to thank everybody in the audience, our frequent flyers, those that are staying with us throughout the summer. I'm kind of amazed that you guys are staying here, and I'm so proud and happy to be able to present this on a weekly basis. So I want to thank you once again to attending Small Biz Talk with your host, Lori Williams. Thank you again, Dr. DeHan.